Hey, what's up, baby? Come in. Hello, I'm Barnes Courtney, and this is my hovel of a tour bus. Welcome to the cheapest tour available. Um, it's a supernatural tour. It's a world tour, although we're currently only doing America. And, um, yes, and I'm singing a wide variety of songs that I've written with my own brain, one of which being my single, Young in America. Plugged. So here we have this television. Um, I don't know if there's any way to hook anything up to it, but it looks fancy. That's the main thing. When people come in, they know that we have a TV, which means we're probably not as poor as they think we are. Um, over here, we have a picture of a small Victorian boy, sort of looking vaguely BDSM with a little bamboo stick. I bought that in a charity shop to spruce up the place. And, um, you know, just add a little class to the living room. Um, here we have some fireworks. Um, you know, just in case we get tired of being alive and want to blow ourselves up. This is the Super Smash Bros. Chalice um, that you win if you are so lucky as to be successful in the Super Smash Bros. Championship, which I've never won. No, I'm not bitter about it. Um, we don't, don't really have any rules in this bus. You know, this we have this table and we have these seats. Uh, and it gets so full in here, it kind of feels like a London Camden nightclub, you know? Very smelly, and sweaty, <laughs> full of full of booze. Um, I've never actually looked in any of these cabinets, so... I don't know, it looks like we have some bowls in here. Peanut butter. Cashews, the Ferrari of nuts. What we got over here? Um... Some Folgers. Do you remember that Folgers commercial from the 90s? The best part of waking up, the Folgers in your cup. No? Just me? Because I'm 30? Cool. <laughs> yeah. What do we have here? Oh. We have some excellent records back here. Wow. Right, these are not mine. But I'll be stealing them because it's my bus and I make the rules. Oh, we actually stumbled across... The, this Zeppelin cover um, in New York. It was like bizarrely a block away from like this girl's house that we met like out in some random bar. And I was stood there and I like looked at um, my friend. I was like, oh my God, is that? And he was like, yeah, that's the fucking, fucking cover of the Zeppelin album. So there you go. When me and London, the drummer, got very drunk. He dared me to steal this picture that was behind the bar. Uh, I have no idea who this man is, but he has become the mascot and the patron saint of this tour. Isn't he lovely? We have uh, some box wine. <laughs> Excellent vintage. Um, some soiled sheets and some bags with aquafina in them. We have a shit ton of Altmont natural mountain water. And this is boots, a speaker, and a chessboard. And a thousand dice. So we got a fridge here, we have the higher. Excellent model. We got this disgusting ice pack that uh, my guitarist uses to make his wrist work. In the fridge we have beer. Ribena. One of my fans gave me this. I love this shit. It's so good. Scourge of young people's teeth from like the late 90s in England. This was banned. This was banned in many schools because it was it had such an enormous concentration of sugar that kids teeth were like literally rotting before their parents' eyes, and uh, someone brought me some, because I was one of those kids. Uh, what else we got? We got some disgusting plant-based deli slices. <laughs> Look, I am an enormous advocate for animal rights. I just think that Tofurky has not quite got it right yet. I think tur you got some work to do, Tofurky. I, I admire your passion um, and your fervor, but this is disgusting. <laughs> I should be giving nice plugs to companies, not just like ripping them a new one on, on this show. I should use my platform for good. Um, 
What else we got? LaCroix, classic. Got some really old whole milk in there that I'm almost certain has gone off and I don't want to touch. And, um, yes. A nasty old cabbage. Heaven has offered you a rose and yet you cling to the cabbage. George Bernard Shaw. Don't ask me how I know that. We have a microwave here. The Hamilton Beach microwave. Excellent. There you go. It works in everything. Tell your friends. We have this uh, bathroom, which looks like relatively sort of alright and, and clean and somewhat luxurious, but has been leaking rivers of mystery liquid into the main cabin for several days. But that's okay, you know? I'm not here to judge. <laughs> Just happy that I get to make music for a living. These are the bunks. I don't think it's anyone's, anyone's in. I think London's in. Hello. Hey. Look at this morning. ridiculous, what are, you, what are you doing? Just watching my, my daily TV. What is this? What's this contraption? Science. London, tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel as though you might have been ready for this interviewer and camera to film no, this part. No, 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 this is, this is my daily look. <laughs> hey, look, you look great, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Saucy. Thank you. What's this weird, like, thing you got down here at the bottom? Oh, I actually learned this from Digital Tour Bus. What is it? It's to keep my bag up. There's no bag on there, and I can put my feet under there and get full extension. Don't you feel like a little bit oppressed having your feet in a cage? Well, some people like their feet in the cage. That's true, it's kind of hot. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is amazing. Is that like connected to the DVD player? <laughs> it might take out the whole fucking TV. <laughs> I don't think it works. Oh no, it does not. You got fairy lights in here? I do. At my disposal. What color? You fancy bitch. Yes sir. <laughs> Look at that. Always. Lap of luxury. <laughs> this bus is absolutely packed to the gills with people, which normally uh, would be horrendous, but I absolutely adore my support band. It's been like like a summer camp, having everybody like mashed in together on one bus. I, I love it. I don't actually want to leave tour. If I could just do this indefinitely forever like Willie Nelson, then I definitely would. Um, so I, I usually I, I feel like too guilty to convert the back lounge into my bedroom. I remember that story about Alexander the Great, you know, when he was like doing so well on his military campaign and then uh, he realized that some of the armies were performing god rituals for, uh, for their generals and he was like, oh, I'm gonna get them to do that for me. And then he starts getting his men to perform these rituals and suddenly they all turn on him and they hate him and he's not one of the people anymore. And I was afraid that in a long roundabout way that would happen to me if I converted the back room into a bedroom. But now I have no choice because the bus is full. So I was, I was really excited to sort of live like a pleasure-covered sultan, you know, like in the back of the bus, like resplendent in silks and furs and, <laughs> and lace and love. Um, but they didn't have time to put the bed in, so <laughs> I sleep in a disgusting hovel. <laughs> I basically have to sleep like on this like thin, decaying, disgusting like sofa cushion. It's really lonely back here. This this couch has basically become my wife. <laughs> um, this isn't even mine. This is just garbage. People just put garbage back here, and they like change their clothes back here and make love to strange and exotic women and men. It's a, it's just a horrible sex dungeon that I have to live in. Um, so yeah, uh, the the heating broke on the bus. Um, the, what was it, two nights ago. And it was so cold, I had to put all of my clothes on at once um, and sort of like shiver around in my bunk like a traumatized war veteran. Um, so I've got my air purifier here. Um, the bus has been leaking an inordinate amount of exhaust fumes into the cabin. And because the engine is back here, it leaks most of them into this spot, which was really fun at first because it kind of like sent me into another realm in my own mind and I got to explore my consciousness beyond my immediate standing. But as I realized that I was 
dying faster than I was supposed to, I thought I've grown rather fond of living. So I bought this thing, um, which is good. You know, it's nice to, to breathe. It was it was ruining my voice as well. I, I couldn't I'd wake up in the morning sounding like an elderly French prostitute. Um, I have a guitar over here. I don't actually know how to play guitar. I just put that there to look cool in front of any women that might come back, if they ever come back at all. Um, what else have I got? Closets and such. I've been trying to go to like a different uh, vintage shop, like every town that we go to. So I stumbled across this place um, in North Carolina. It was like a military surplus store. And I bought all these like insane, like old timey captain's jackets. So I can like stand in front of brick buildings and feel important on my off days. It really works. So yeah, and then uh, one of my fans bought me this incredible Zelda wolf hat. So when all the heating broke, I was basically like, uh, I'll recreate how I looked. I had this on. Like that. And then I sort of did all the buttons up. And then I kind of just huddled into the corner like this, but it was still too cold to sleep. So I kind of just like reminisced on like memories past and, and nice moments, you know, birthdays when I was eight, the first time my father told me he loved me. <laughs> it was, it was fucking horrible. <laughs> But that's the nature of, of adventure, isn't it? You know, there has to be some danger. Otherwise, it's not a real story. <laughs> it's just a nice time. Well, you've seen the sad, lonely existence that is the Barnes Courtney tour. If you would like to come and see that in person, please go to barnescourtney.com or my Instagram or all of the other apps that exist in the world. And now I must prepare myself uh, for my show. So get the fuck out. <laughs> Goodbye. Get out of here. I seem like a terrible person.